Welcome to the diving in section. This is where the fun starts, where we roll up our sleeves and move into the real business. In this lecture, we will get familiar with the core ingredients that we will use to compose our business rules. Just one comment before we start. Throughout this course, I use the words BRF plus and BRF interchangeably. To remove any doubt, in all cases, I mean BRF plus. Moving on. BRF plus is an object oriented software. It is a great concept since it makes BRF plus such a user friendly tool. You can think about it like a basket full with colorful Lego bricks. There are all kinds of bricks with different characteristics. There are small ones and there are big ones. There are simple ones and there are complex ones and so on. Each one is designed to be used in some special way. But you as the designer have total freedom of what model you want to build and how to go about it. That's terrific. The Lego bricks of BRF Plus are called objects and they come in different types and even subtypes. We will now describe those different objects and understand their key features. As this is still an introductory lecture, we won't go into much detail. But don't worry, each object will be thoroughly explained in a dedicated lecture. Let's start! The most basic object in BRF Plus is the application. If you enter a clean slate BRF, you must create an application to get started. The application object in itself does not hold logic to be evaluated. Rather, its sole purpose is to provide us with means of ordering and organizing our business rules. The idea is very simple. All rules which have a common ground process-wise that is, they are used in the same business application or family of applications, are to be put into the same application object. In other words, if two business rules are somehow connected, it might be a good idea to place them in the same application. No obligation to do so, however. Another way to think about the application object is to think of it like the well-known files directory. Generally speaking, all the files in some folder or directory have some common denominator, otherwise they wouldn't be in the same directory. But this analogy is not perfect, as we cannot nest applications inside other applications. So we have application and we use it to store our other objects. That's easy enough. Next in line is the function object. The function object is much more interesting than the rather dull application. In fact, the function object is one of the most interesting objects in the realm of BRF Plus, as it has the honor of being the intermediate object between BRF Plus and whatever external process that wants to consume a BRF Plus rule. Just a word of warning for the other pairs among you. Please don't confuse between the BRF function object and the ABAP function module. They are not the same thing. As there is an entire lecture devoted to the function object, we will not elaborate on that object type just yet. Rather, I will just say this. It ain't called function for nothing. Like a mathematical function, the function object accepts some input parameters, does some manipulation on those parameters, and then outputs a result. You are right to guess that the business logic resides in the manipulation on the input parameters. But as the case with applications, you won't find this logic on the function object itself. Remember, the function object is merely an interface between BRF and the outside world. To relieve the mystery, I'll tell you that the carriers of the business logic are objects called expressions, and they come in all sorts of sizes and colors, meaning there exist many subtypes of the expression object type. Among of the more common ones are decision tables, 
decision trees, formulas, and case expressions. I'm sure you can imagine their practicality just by hearing their names, as each expression subtype behaves in a completely different way, we'll dedicate specific lectures to each one of them. So don't be alarmed if we'll just move on to talk about other building blocks. In the meanwhile, just remember, it is expression objects that encapsulate the majority of the business logic. The other stuff is there for support. Next on the menu, we have data objects. If expression objects are the carriers of business logic, data objects are carriers of data. They function just like variables in a program. They keep for us the data after it gets manipulated and also makes it ready for us for further manipulation. They are also used to define the typing of both the input and the output of the function object. Data objects come in three flavors, data elements, structures, and tables. Those flavors or data object subtypes are linked directly to the corresponding entities of the well-known ABAP data dictionary. This should not come as a surprise since BRS Plus is an ABAP-based software. For those of you who are not sure of the data dictionary concept, here's a quick reminder. The data element represents an elementary data unit that cannot be reduced to smaller data units. An example for a data element is a numeric data element. Such an element can hold a number and nothing else. On the other hand, a structure can be composed of any number of other data objects, including tables and other structures. It helps visualize a structure as both specification for table columns and an actual table restricted to just one row. A table is just as trivial as it sounds. It has a column definition and can have an arbitrary number of rows. To define the columns of a table or its structure, we need, well, you guessed it, a structure object. But tables can also be defined with data elements in which case the table will be just one column wide. Next in line are objects called rules. Don't know about you, but when I first heard there were objects in BRF Plus called rules, I thought to myself, well, if BRF stands for Business Rules Framework, then these rules objects must be the real deal. Everything else is surely quite redundant. In reality, this was not the case. Not to diminish the importance of rule objects. On the contrary, they are very valuable and come in handy in many situations. But as we already know, expressions are in the heart of our business. So, what do those rules do? Rules objects provide us with an if-then construct. They enable us to process some predefined logic with the condition that some predefined criteria get satisfied. They also enable us to process other logic if the criteria doesn't get satisfied. Not too bad, actually. Rule objects usually are not created independently, but are created as part of the creation of a rule set, which is our next object type to be discussed. Rule set is one of the more important objects in BRS Plus. At first sight, it doesn't look like much. As the name implies, a rule set object enables us to combine several rule objects together. The word set is misleading since rule set is not without order. In fact, the key feature of the rule set is its ability to activate several rules in a specific sequence or steps. This feature will later be revealed as a key feature for building complex business rules. It also has more interesting features that will be discussed in detail later this course. One thing worth mentioning right now, though, 
is that the rule set and the rules are the only object types we encountered thus far that are expandable. Generally speaking, every other mentioned object type must be used for us to create a valid and meaningful business rule. There are some exceptions to this claim, but this is the general case. And this is a perfect opportunity for a quick recap. Every business rule must reside totally or partially inside one or more applications. Notice the fact that a rule can be scattered across several applications. This is possible since all rules are composed from several, potentially many different objects, and each object can exist in a different application. The main object of any business rule is the function which to the outside world is the business rule. Whenever a process outside of BRF Plus wants to consume a business rule, it actually calls its function, and the rest is taken care of by BRF Plus runtime engine. In order to activate the function, some input may be laid in or not, but we definitely want to get something back. This is why it is necessary to use data objects. We have to use them to convey data in and out of BRF. And finally, we need at least one expression for our business rule to have a business meaning. To finish this lecture, I will mention another important but non-mandatory object type, the action object type. Like expressions, actions come in many different subtypes. The idea behind actions is simple to trigger some noticeable change in the system, be it updating a table in the database, sending an email, or starting a workflow. With actions, your business rules will have more than just brain, they will have muscles. So, there you have it. Now you know all the basic types of the building blocks of BRF Plus. In the next sections, we will go deeper in explaining the use of each one of them, including, of course, actual demonstrations on BRF Plus itself.